And what's not fun about snacks? What's not fun about music? What's not fun about like just having a little bit more flexibility while we're also getting what we need to get done? Welcome back to Teacher Tales, where we give you the keys to overcoming teacher burnout to find work-life balance and educational bliss if it still exists. I'm your host, Tony Rambles, and on this episode of Teacher Tales, me and Jen Jamie continue our end of the year advice with the breakdown of Edutopia's eight epic ideas to end the school year article. There are plenty of ideas here to help you beat burnout and end the year on a high note. Jen, welcome back for... How to end the school year, my partner. Thank you. It's always good. As you all uh, know by now, uh, Jen is back for part two for how to end the school year. And we're going to cover some epic ideas that are really mm-hmm. going to help you to make it a memorable ending for your students. I did take a peek at the, the link that you shared, too. Ooh. Eight epic ideas for ending the school year. And these are fantastic. So number two, Mm -hmm. I particularly enjoy. But it mentions that a college professor where the student had the students take their final exam in a room filled with food, decorations, and essentially a a celebration. And it was actually an experiment. And that group of students did exceptionally better than any other group ever. And it's so like obvious (laughs) that that would happen when you, but we don't, we don't often think like that. But when this um, conclusion comes about and you read it, that's what I mean. It seems so obvious now in hindsight that that is something that we can apply to the end of the year you've got final exams they're very important Mm -hmm. and so is celebrating so let's combine them did you ever have like parties at the end of the year you know food bring food and stuff yeah i i I think i just started doing that last year i was like hey just bring stuff i don't know why i didn't do it before i think i was just Mm. i was working you know, I was trying to get stuff done and we would just, it's not like we were doing all of this very important work all the way up to the end. That's not what I right. mean. It's just not something that was on the, on the front of my mind until you go, uh, or a kid goes, Hey, you know, can I go to so-and-so's class? They're having a party in here. They have food. I'm like, dang it. Why don't we have food? <laughs> 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 because I didn't think about it. So it's the best time. It is, it is. We need to have food. We need to close it out with brownies and cookies. I don't understand why I haven't done it before. I will be doing it this year. I will. Yeah. Yeah. I will be following up with you. <laughs> I need you to report back. <laughs> but no, it's music, food. Listen, when you're having fun, they're having fun. Yep. And what's not fun about snacks? What's not fun about music? What's not fun about like just having a little bit more flexibility while we're also getting what we need to get done. And they need something to look forward to because you've got the teacher next door with the countdown on the, on the door. <laughs> Shout out to the teacher next door with the countdown. Uh, hopefully it's working for you and your kids. Uh, yeah. Speaking of the teacher I'm sure it is. next door. Uh, I think it's important to celebrate our colleagues. Uh, It's a great opportunity for us to talk to those people that we've been sometimes working with all year, hand in hand, arm in arm, coming up with lessons or going on field trips or, in my case, driving a bus for people. Um, it's It's a time where we can just talk about how we appreciate them, how they're doing a great job. Uh, because you just never know, like a lot of teachers are definitely struggling. 
Uh, I had a talk with somebody today. And it was like, am I just making the right decisions? Like, this is awful. I feel like we had to have a talk. I'm like, you have so many people, uh, especially me, that are vouching for you because I know the kind of work that this teacher does. So whenever I'm talking to other people and I'm talking about the people that are working on campus, being able to just celebrate others even when they're not around is definitely yeah. something, a good thing to practice. So celebrate your colleagues. Celebrate those teachers that you work closely with. Celebrate the teachers that you just hear about them doing stuff yeah. that you don't necessarily work close with because they may not be in your department or whatever definitely try to celebrate those people and that that could really just look like sending an email you know not everybody's going to write out cards and sticky notes and put them in everybody's mailbox and all that wonderful stuff if you can do that if you're the best teacher uh, i'm not doing that but if even if you could send an email when somebody pops up in your mind just to say, hey, you did a great job this year. I want to shout you out. That is more than enough, I think, for a lot of teachers just to get that coming in. I like that. I've actually started this thing where if I'm thinking of someone, I don't want to run into them in three weeks and say, oh, I was just thinking about you. Uh-uh, yeah, no. You do? If I'm thinking of someone, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to text them. <laughs> I'm going to call them. I'm going to say, hey, you were on my mind. I just wanted to say hi. So absolutely agree with, with what you're saying. And how does your school celebrate other teachers? So, for example, mm -hmm. in my junior high, if somebody retires, they had like a, a retirement celebration. And I remember I, I showed up and it was my first or second year of teaching. I, I didn't know her at all. Never once talked to her, but I, I went to her retirement thing and she was so thankful. And, and that just goes back to what you were just saying. Like, you don't need to know them. It's very small. Pop in for five, 10 minutes. Show up. These teachers, we can appreciate each other, not just the parents or the administration. And we can do it year round. 100%. Uh, we have an ongoing celebration uh, called Noble Night of the Week. So they have it for a teacher and they have it for a student. And for students, they have it for every grade level. So you can nominate people uh, and just send those in. Just say that this person is doing a great job at whatever it is that's, that they're doing. Um, otherwise, I'm trying to think, do we have other stuff? Sometimes so emails like, and stuff will go out. But yeah. How about your department? Anything amongst or among departments? I don't think anything specific outside of an yeah. email or like if we have a right. if we have a, a text chain. So, you know, something will get sent out there. Uh, but outside of that, uh, my yeah. department head is really good about every now and then you will show up and there will be something on your desk. Usually some candy, <laughs> but just those little things, I think, go a long way. They go just a very long way. A little cup with a candy cane on your desk since it's, uh, you know, Christmas time, just saying, hey, thank you. I yeah. really appreciate those things. Shout out to Mrs. Ward, who's also a friend of the podcast. Aw, shout out to her. The eight mm -hmm. epic ideas. For ending the school year, and this is from the Edutopia website. So shout out to Edutopia for giving us a great list to kick around. So we are mm. over number two, which is the exam with all the yeah. food and stuff. I think I, I think because our party was on exam day, I think maybe we did have like some food and stuff in the back of the classroom. It was semester exams because my class is only one semester. I think we did have something like that. I'm sure it wasn't like a room filled with food and decorations and the promise <laughs> of a celebration. And I'm reading from the list. It wasn't that. But I think we did have a little something, something. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's interesting. 
make a top 10 list is number one. Mm -hmm. So in my class, and this just kind of came up, what is that? Organically, we were talking about who the best presenters are or the kids were talking about it. They were talking to me, but there was like uh, this one kid, he was like, uh, you know, I'm top, I'm top 10. And I just told him, I was like, you're not top 10. You're probably like top 15 now. Uh, very candid conversations I have. So that creates this conversation where now we are ranking not the whole class. There was like a top 10 and a top 15 and a top 20, I think is where we cutting it off. Cause you know, we don't want to make people feel bad and make them last, but we go, okay, well, this person is these people right here. These are definitely like top five. And so now we kind of rank the top five and then we round out the top 10. And this is so much fun because yeah. you know, we talked about celebrating each other. They're celebrating each other in class. Like, oh, well, this person, this is the goat right here in the class. They're always professional. They always dress up. They just got this voice and this presence. So all the stuff that I'm teaching them about that many of them do not put in practice, mm. they recognize it in the best speakers in the class. Somebody's going to get so, the goat. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. That is fun. To, so like, it, it, even though we're crit critiquing, these are teenagers critiquing each other. It was, it never felt like tearing down. So when I saw this mm. top 10 list, I thought immediately of that because that just happened. It started last week and they really just kept it going. They want to get this this list built out. So that was fun. That's great. I love that. What I love that they're doing the rankings. That's phenomenal. So we already talked about number two with the exam and having all the food. Why don't you kick us on to number three? Number three. The title of this one is Don't Pack Up Too Soon. And it mentions, I think this is a great idea. And it's just, if you do have any decorations up for celebrating, there is no reason to take it down the very next day. As long as you can wait till the end, till that very last day of school, take it down then. And let's say if, if you do need to pull down posters from your wall or you're moving, cool. But leave those decorations up if you have them, right? It's it's not like happy birthday decorations that happen once a year. We're still celebrating. Mm. If you're having fun, they're having fun. And we already we already know that when decorations are up, you know, the morale is better as per number one. So I like that. So, yeah. So number four is interesting because it's kind of like just making a toast. It says the bottle of dreams. Sounds whimsical. I like that word. Uh, but everybody cracks yeah. open like a bottle. This says do it with water, but I would imagine everybody has a drink uh, mm -hmm. and you, you open it and then there is a toast, like a farewell. I think that is a good idea. And I think that, I don't know if I'm going to do it, but maybe somebody will. I'll introduce it to my class. Maybe I'll just give them the whole list and say, what do y'all want to do? I like that. That's a great idea. Boom. Done. Boom. Number five. Five. Gene. Number, five. Gene. Number five. Number five. So I want to know if you've ever done this, but mm -hmm. you can do this at any time of the year, but the end of the year is a great time. So two weeks before school ends, you can have each student, um, their name is listed on the top of a separate sheet of paper. Each paper circulates through the class and other students write genuine compliments. And then it says right here that each paper, um, that the teacher typed up the compliments on a piece of paper and put it in a clear plastic stand. And then the students then cut up pictures that have been placed on the wall throughout the year to embellish their personal memory. I really just like, honestly, those compliments. The part that I like too about this is that the teacher then typed up those compliments. 
albeit that's a lot of work for a teacher to do. If you, if you oh, teach yeah. high school, this, this sounds like this one's meant for like, um, you know, one elementary school class. But what's important about this is perhaps not typing it up, but reviewing it. Um, because I have heard of an unfortunate story of a particular class in a, in a, in my current district where my kids go, mm-hmm. where a couple of students wrote a couple of nasty things and you, they didn't know who, because it's, it's kind of anonymous. So there are ways around this and, um, we just have to think outside of the box. Typically that wouldn't happen, but I love this. I have done it and it's beautiful. Have you ever done anything like that? I have been at a PD where we did something like this. We had mm-hmm. like string and paper plates or did we just have to hold the plates? Either way. Yeah. And people just like wrote stuff on the plate and then we got to keep the plate for the next year. Mm. So very similar. Uh, I haven't done anything like this just because I can't do everything. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I like when we can get the students involved, though, and have them complimenting each other and reflecting. I'm really big on reflection. So this could be a way to do something like that. Hey, we'll see. Yeah. And, and, and real quick, in this, the person who wrote this specific list said the most meaningful year ending event happened in my daughter's fourth grade class. And she ends this tip with this um, type of end of the year activity by saying my daughter still has it and she's in college. So this just, this could go a really long way. Yeah. Number six. Number six. Survey your students to celebrate the memories. Now, I do give a survey at the end of the semester, and I don't think it has anything to do with memories, though. Oh, that's not true. Huh. I remember my survey. (laughs) What will you remember most about this class is one of the questions on my survey. Ha. Mm, This next part, though, is pretty cool. Turn the answers into a word cloud and display it on the board during the final class celebration. I love that. That is really good because I, I'm a high school teacher. I got to do that for six classes. Ooh. <laughs> That's not going to happen, but it is a great idea. Yeah. Yes, I know. I know. So number seven, write your students a letter. No. Now I already, I already know the answer to this. If Tony, if there's no time to type in sentences from a survey, not happening. You're definitely not going to write your students a letter. And I love my students too, but I'm I'm not doing that either. Because how many students do we have? Typically, right? How many students do you have in a class? Seventy. Mm-hmm, yeah. Something like that. Mm-hmm, right. It's a no-go. But in elementary school, this would be great. Mm-hmm. Right. This last uh, idea, though, I think we both liked a lot. And you referenced it when you mm-hmm. said that that, uh, that best speaker in the class deserves some kind of uh, trophy. This is playing an Oscars event. So roll out the red carpet. Have students plan the culminating event. Imagine an Oscars type ceremony where they can give awards for the year's best stuff, right? Whatever that looks like in your classroom. I think this is an excellent idea. This is something that I've thought of, but Mm -hmm. I just have not. I'm not going to say I didn't have the time to plan it. Just like the parties, I didn't think to plan it ahead of time so that it can be done well. So this is not a bad idea. This is something that I still may have time to do. This is perfect for you. And they can generate 
the ideas. But here, I like well, my favorite part of this that really got me to like this the most is it says um, they can give awards for the year's best books. That's not the part, though. I'm just reading this sentence. Best student presentations and most epic classroom moments. I think that's so much fun. So let's say they do you the top 10 with your speech present presentations and you have all these elements. You have the goat, you know, greatest of all time of, yeah. of all. And then there's, and you can rate the top 10, but then there's also epic moments and there's things they can, they can contribute ideas on what awards can take place based on, based on that year. Oh yeah. Each class might be different. Like most personality. Mm-hmm. Person who never dressed up for a presentation. I don't know. Oh yeah. Be, See, everybody wins. <laughs> it doesn't just always have to be about oh, grades. I love like, it. The smarties. There's other right. stuff that we can celebrate, like most creative. Ooh, I I remember there's one poster that this kid created. And like every class that came in, they were like, Who made this? This is insane. Like this is amazing. Who's doing all of this kind of work for a project for your class? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be great to celebrate that person, you know, best artwork, you know, something like that. Yes. So I yes. definitely like this and hopefully can plan it. You got to check back in with me on this. I'm one. checking back in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm going to, <laughs> I want to mention something that's not on this list that sure. um, I kind of used to do, which is to, for, I would have my freshmen at the end of the year, write mm -hmm. advice for the next incoming freshman. And then um, they would, they could also, I didn't do this part too, but they could also sort of rate what are the top 10 things they need to know. And in other words, I mean, it could also be written as a survival guide. And it could be that Ooh. they can do it together as a class or as a group or alone. They can, ch they can do a presentation on it. Those are the kind of fun, meaningful activities that they can do at the end of the year that is interesting to them, provides value. And you can coordinate any standards you want to work with that. Of course, I'm an ELA teacher. So if you're a math right. teacher, you know, work it out. Right. We can, you can always figure it out. That's right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Damn, this was a lot of fun coming up with these different ideas and figuring out how to end the school year on a positive note, mm -hmm. always with the goal of reducing burnout in helping st not students. Well, I guess kind of students helping teachers with their time management. Thank you for coming on. I'm sure we'll do more wonderful things in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tony. That is our episode for today. I hope you all enjoyed that conversation between me and Jen. We will, of course, do more stuff in the future. Uh, she's awesome. It's always a pleasure having her on as we provide the keys to unlocking the teacher life you desire. Before we get out of here, remember, the end of the year is a culmination of all of your and your kids' hard work. Make a plan to take care of yourself and them as you wind down. And have fun. It's the end of the year. Because you enjoyed what you learned from this episode, go join the Teacher Triumphs Facebook group. Me and Jen created it as a way to help you overcome burnout and balance life by building community with other wonderful educators. Thank you for listening. Keep teaching, keep learning, and I will see you all on the next journey.